Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on necrotizing enterocolitis. Necrotizing enterocolitis is a syndrome of intestinal injury, and is the most common intestinal emergency occurring in preterm infants, admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit. NEC occurs in 1 to 3 per 1,000 live births, and 1 to 8 percent of admissions to the neonatal intensive care unit. Prematurity is the most consistent and significant factor associated with neonatal NEC. The disease occurs in 4 to 13 percent of infants who weigh less than 1500 g at birth. NEC is infrequent in term infants. Most cases of NEC occur in premature infants born before 34 weeks gestation who have been fed enterally. Prematurity is associated with immaturity of the gastrointestinal tract, including decreased integrity of the intestinal mucosal barrier, depressed mucosal enzymes, suppressed gastrointestinal hormones, suppressed intestinal host defense system, decreased coordination of intestinal motility, and differences in blood flow autoregulation, which is thought to play a significant role in the pathogenesis of NEC. More than 90% of infants diagnosed with NEC have been fed enterally, but NEC has been reported in infants who have never been fed. Feeding with human milk has shown a beneficial role in reducing the incidence of NEC. In addition, probiotics may offer potential benefits for the preterm infant by increasing mucosal barrier function, improving nutrition, upregulating the immune system, and reducing mucosal colonization by potential pathogens. It also is theorized that compromised intestinal blood flow contributes to NEC. Early clinical signs of NEC include abdominal distension, feeding intolerance or increased gastric residuals, emesis, rectal bleeding, and occasional diarrhea. As the disease progresses, patients may develop marked abdominal distension, bilious emesis, ascites, abdominal wall erythema, lethargy, temperature instability, increased episodes of apnea or bradycardia, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and shock. With abdominal perforation, the abdomen may develop a bluish discoloration. For investigations, the white blood cell count can be elevated, but often it is depressed. Thrombocytopenia is common. In addition, infants may develop coagulation abnormalities along with metabolic derangements, including metabolic acidosis, electrolyte imbalance, and hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. No unique infectious agent has been associated with NEC. Bacteriological and fungal cultures may prove helpful but not conclusive. Radiographic imaging is essential to the diagnosis of NEC. The earliest radiographic finding is intestinal ileus, often associated with thickening of the bowel loops and air fluid levels. The potanomonic radiographic finding is pneumatosis intestinalis, caused by hydrogen gas production from pathogenic bacteria, present between the subserosa and muscularis layers of the bowel wall. Radiographic findings also may include a fixed or persistent dilated loop of bowel, intrahepatic venous gas, and pneumoperitoneum seen with bowel perforation. The differential diagnosis of NEC includes sepsis with intestinal ileus or evolvulus. Both conditions can present with systemic signs of sepsis and abdominal distension. The absence of pneumatosis on abdominal radiographs does not rule out the diagnosis of NEC. Other causes of abdominal distension and perforation, such as gastric or ileal perforation, should be considered and investigated. Patients diagnosed with Hirschsprung enterocolitis or severe gastroenteritis may present with pneumatosis intestinalis. The management of NEC includes the discontinuation of enteral feedings, gastrointestinal decompression with nasogastric suction, fluid and electrolyte replacement, total parenteral nutrition, and systemic broad-spectrum antibiotics. When the diagnosis of NEC is made, consultation with a pediatric surgeon should be obtained. Even with aggressive and appropriate medical management, 25-50% to 50 of infants with NEC require surgical intervention. The decision to perform surgery is obvious when the presence of a pneumoperitoneum is observed on abdominal radiograph. Other, not so obvious indications for surgical intervention include, rapid clinical deterioration despite medical therapy, rapid onset and progression of pneumatosis, abdominal mass, and intestinal obstruction. The surgical procedure of choice is laparotomy, with removal of the frankly necrotic and non-viable bowel. Many extremely small infants are managed initially with primary peritoneal drainage, followed by surgical intervention is needed later when the infant is stable, and a laparotomy can be performed safely. 
The long-term outcome includes intestinal strictures requiring further surgical intervention, short bowel syndrome with poor absorption of enteral fluids and nutrients, associated cholestasis with resultant cirrhosis and liver failure from prolonged parenteral nutrition, and neurodevelopmental delay from prolonged hospitalization. That's all for this video. Thank you.